guys, I want to, I want to, okay, Leah, let's keep talking high density. Cause speaking of high density, I'm very highly dense and I'm not really understanding. Um, I want to bring it back. So Darren earlier mentioned, you know, we're looking at speeds of up to 30%. I'm pretty sure you said 39%. I did. And then you, and then you talked about a box. <laughs> Can you walk me through where this bandwidth increase is coming from, dude? Yeah. 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 So, so it's, um, so it, it comes from the qualm. Qualm means that I'm going to transmit a symbol of, I'm going to transmit some data and I want to pack as many bits into that transmission as possible. So Qualm 1024 means that I can pack 20, 25% uh, more data into the transmission than the previous generation. So there's a, there's a 25% increase that we can start to add on to. And, and we can see that, you know, immediately. And when doing some testing, uh, you can see that plus, plus some more. Um, so, so Quam, that, that's a, a really big deliverable. Next thing is that look at the things that, that rob existing Wi-Fi of speed. And the thing that robs Wi-Fi of speed is interference. It's other devices. It, it's not just my home, it's my neighbor's home. It's not just my business, my retail store. It's the retail stores to the left and the right of me that are also using Wi-Fi for their business. So, so when we start to control the, the interference of these de of the devices and make better efficient use of the spectrum, then we increase the speed. So, so it comes from that as well. Um, that takes a dynamic network. It takes a dynamic adjustable network. So um, um, before I get into the dynamics, so Wi-Fi 6 has two things that that's, that's, uh, gives it efficiency. One is OFDMA. OFDMA takes the transmissions and splits it up into small bite-sized pieces. Instead of transmitting 20 megahertz or 40 megahertz at a time, it can now assign small resources as small as two megahertz and then spread them out to different devices so that multiple devices can transmit at the same time. Um, that's called OFDMA. Now, there's another one, multi-user MIMO. I mentioned it right, right up earlier, which we've we used it before. It's better. It's more efficient now with uh, Wi-Fi 6. So we have multi-user MIMO and we have OFDMA. The problem is you can't use the two at the same exact time. They actually are incompatible. So now, dynamic. We're, uh, we're, using, uh, we're using Qualcomm. Qualcomm is one of the leading vendors, chipset vendors. They have lots of experience with the LTE world and, and OFDMA comes from LTE. So we're leveraging Qualcomm's latest and greatest chipsets. Makes a great product. It gives us lots of tools to build a great technology. And so we're using, we're using uh, uh, their, their latest stuff. And now, now here's, here's what Qualcomm does that I like. Qualcomm's driver is very dynamic. So it can select the OFDMA or the multi-user MIMO. So you don't have to manually set a configuration to change that, it does it automatically. Uh, another thing it does is depending upon the number of devices that connect, what is the bit rate required? What is the RF interference profile for that network? then the, the Qualcomm driver and the radio will actually select the best combination of those little tiny slices of two megahertz of frequency, the best combinations of that um, to make the most efficient use of that transmission. So that dynamic nature is what, uh, is what that we like about the, the chips that we're using. So you, uh, you mentioned Qualcomm there. I'd, I'd like to get Klaus's input on that. I mean, you're seeing this across multiple different uh, manufacturers out there. How does Qualcomm fit into, into the puzzle? Yeah, I mean, Qualcomm has been uh, one of the top technology providers in Wi-Fi for a very long time, right? And, and they are a cornerstone, honestly, of the industry because if you look at how uh, Wi-Fi technology is brought to market, uh, the core components of Wi-Fi technology come fundamentally from the chipset vendors and there, there's a handful of, of, of big ones that basically provide that technology and, and Qualcomm is right at the top uh, among, in that group, right? And there's no question that, uh, that they are one of the leaders and, and the technology uh, combination, the combination of OFDMA and multi-user MIMO, uh, you can think of those in some ways as, as, as complementary, right? Because each will apply uh, to perhaps a slightly different use case and each will be optimized a slightly different use case. But now we have them in, in the box of tools that we can use and both make a huge difference, right? 
uh, and and absolutely, I mean, Qualcomm is is, uh, is one of the leaders in that space, no question about it. And I commend you for for picking them for your equipment. And um, as I'm sure I, I would have guessed, you probably would have anyway. And one thing else, just to kind of add in on that, it's, it goes into all of our our stuff. Um, so you don't you don't have to take a uh, there's no hit on a, like some low end device where some some manufacturers may choose to put um, you know a different chipset in in what they would consider a lower end device. We use it across the board. Cool. That's so right. uh, we we use it not only across the board in our access networks. We use it in our outdoor broadband. So our engineers are very familiar with uh, how to how to turn the knobs and uh, tweak it for maximum performance. Right.